Father, I thank you so much for your word that we're going to listen to. And then we're also going to break bread together. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to do so. We are very, very, very grateful. Thank you so much, O oh Lord, for the communion table. Thank you, Lord, you know, for the reenactment of the Passover meal. Thank you so, so very much, O oh God, for the blood of your son, Jesus, that was shed for us on the cross of Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for your body that was pierced, O oh God. Thank you so much. You did all of that, not because you were a criminal. In fact, you were nailed amongst two criminals, not because you were a criminal, not because you did anything wrong, but because you took our place. Father God, you became the sacrificial lamb for us so that, you know, we don't have to pay the penalty for our sins. And so tonight we are very grateful as I bring this, you know, short word of exhortation, Lord, I'm just praying that it will minister grace to each one of us and it will transform us, Lord, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Um, the little um, word of exhortation I'm bringing tonight, um, tagging it, grace found me. None of us went to the market looking for grace. Um, in fact, we didn't even know grace existed, um, but grace found us. Grace found us where we are. And there's a song that we, we sing. I'm not sure how many of us still remember. We haven't sung it in a while. It says, your grace has found me just as I am. Empty-handed but alive in your hands. We're singing majesty. Majesty. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty, we're singing majesty, majesty. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty-handed but alive in your hands. We're singing majesty, majesty. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Ah, Father, we are so grateful. We are so grateful. That song says, your grace has found me just as I am. How many people are excited about that? The grace of God found us just as we are. Hey, can you imagine if God was looking for us to be corrupt, cor uh, corrected or transformed or born again or saved? Before his grace came to us, we'll be waiting for you. I mean, the wait will be forever. But thank God, the grace of God found us just as we are. And it is not leaving us as we are. You know, I don't know what your past life was like, but mine definitely wasn't righteous. And I'm glad that the grace of God found me how I was, where I was, you know, doing whatever I was doing. And is gradually transforming me to the kind of person God wants me to be. And I'm sure the same testimony is true about each one of us. Yeah, absolutely true. Thank God for grace. Why would all of us be on this platform tonight if not for the grace of God? You know, and I like what it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 10. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. I'm actually going to read that in two translations. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. That's my prayer tonight. That the grace of God that was bestowed upon us is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. But the, by the grace of God, I am what I am. We are what we are today. We are born again. We are saved. We are tongue speaking. We are sanctified only by the grace of God. Only because the grace of God just found us as we are. And he says this grace is not in vain. I pray one more time that the grace of God upon our lives will not be in vain. And that was why, you know, thank God for those prayers that Sister Teresa led us in. One of you said, God, please don't let me do anything that will forfeit your grace. The grace is already there. It's already available. Don't let me do anything that will make me 
be denied of your grace because you and I need the grace of God. And then Paul goes on to say, he says, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. My, my brethren tonight, brothers and sisters, there are people who have labored more than we didn't get the results we got to. So it is not, I thank God for labor. Thank God for hard work. Thank God that we are in the right place, doing the right things and all that. By the end of the day, it is still the grace of God. And that is what Paul is saying to us. That look, <laughs> I've labored, I've done everything, but I recognize that whatever I am today, whatever, whatever I am accomplishing, whatever God is doing through me, whatever God will yet do through me or through us, it is not by, by, by our own doing. It is by the grace of God. And I'm going to read the same text in the New Living Translation, 1 Corinthians 15, 10. He says, but whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor. That special favor is called grace on me and not without results. For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. Yet it was not I, but God was working through me by his grace. I love that. So it's not us, you know, but Christ that is working in us through his grace. God working in us through his grace. And we are very grateful that the grace of God has found us. You know, um, going back to that song, it says, your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed, but alive in your hand. You know, Empty handed, God can, you can use, you, you know, the song that says, if you can use anything, you can use me. He says, take my heart, take my hands, take my will. If you can use anything, you can use me. So when we came, we came empty. Whatever we have now, God has filled us with his grace. And he says, forever I am changed by your love. You cannot separate between God's grace and his love. It is his love that releases great grace upon us. God loves us so much. So he said, okay, just take my special favor. Because another word for grace is, some people call it unmerited favor. Some people call it special favor. When you use, whenever you use the word favor, it has nothing to do with what a person has done. And Paul recognizes it. that Okay, yes, I'm laboring, I'm doing all these things. But I know that whatever, whatever is going on right now, whatever I am right now, it is only by God's grace. And we are very grateful. Philippians 2.13, I love this. Philippians 2.13. It says, For it is God which walketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. That's grace. God walking in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That is absolutely nothing but the grace of God. That's simply grace. And we are very grateful to you, Lord that your grace works in our lives. You know, God, it is God that enables us to do what we are doing. So God will give us instructions. He will say, go and do X, Y, Z. And then he will also stand by you, giving you the enabling grace to be able to do it. The grace of God has found us. And if you look at Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, and I'm also going to read this in two translations as well. I'm going to start reading that in the KJV, by, by, for by uh, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Through the grace of God, we are saved. So you can see, you, so if you, if you look at it, one place is saying it's not by labor, and this one says, look, it's not by works of righteousness so that nobody can say, ah, it is because I am holy, it is because I am right. right. And that, that's why um, when the, the Pharisees were complaining about who Jesus was whining and dining with, it says when you go to the hospital, the hospital is for who? It's for people who are sick. You don't find well people in the hospital. What are they doing there? So, and then you are now complaining that somebody is a... Uh, uh, is sick. Hey, the hospital is for sick people. Jesus Christ, he didn't come. You know, he didn't come to meet those who are purportedly righteous. He came to save sinners. He didn't come to save the righteous. You know, so I love this. So we are not saved by by works of righteousness. No, we are just simply saved by the grace of God because the grace of God found us just as we are. 
and we are extremely grateful. And I'm going to read that also in the New Living Translation, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. It says, God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Grace is a gift that God has given unto us. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. So it's not, we're not being rewarded for the good we, done, we did when God saved us. We're not being rewarded for the good we did when he released grace, grace on, upon us. His grace is, he lavishes his grace upon us just out of his own benevolence, just out of his kind-heartedness. And tonight, we're just thankful to God that his grace has, has, has found us just as we are. I can't imagine if we are living in the olden days. I'm sure by now all of us would have been consumed. <laughs> Our generation definitely could not stand the heat of the law as it was. You know, thank God that the law wasn't abolished, but the grace has been released to help us do the things God wants us to do. You know, because the law is just a command that tells you what to do, but doesn't empower you to do it. But now we still have those instructions. We still have the Ten Commandments that we need to do. But now we have the grace of God upon our lives that enables us to be able to do the right things. And that's absolutely wonderful. And so tonight, as we institute the Holy Communion, which, of course, as you know, I mean, if you read through the Old Testament and you read about how... um. They were told to kill the sacrificial lamb and put the, the blood on the lintel. And when the angel of death passes, it would, it would pass over whatever household that blood mark was upon. We know that when we take the communion, it's a reenactment of that. And we're trusting the Lord tonight that as we break bread, as we take the wine, the bread, the blood of Jesus will be upon us. You know, his blood will be upon us. And when the angel of death, destruction, and all that comes, it will not come anywhere near us. It will not come anywhere near our household or our family or our children or even our nation in Jesus' name. So um, the greatest act of, um, of, of love that God showed was this, this, the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we break bread tonight, the Bible says we do that in remembrance of what Jesus Christ has done, you know, and the Passover meal is an act of grace that God has shown to us, you know, as believers in Christ. So we're going to get uh, uh, the communion items ready, I believe. They're ready. Um, I did say it was going to be a very short word. It's just a word to encourage us, um, to encourage us um, tonight. Um, please, whatever you do, one of the prayer points that um, Sister Teresa also led us to pray is that God, tell God, I'm relying on your grace. It's so important, please. That is one prayer. You know, all the prayers are important, but that one, please, let's say, God, we are relying on your grace. I have no power of my own. I'm relying on your grace. I'm relying on your grace. It's so important that we keep drumming that, God, I'm relying on your grace. I'm depending on you. I'm relying on your grace. I'm depending on you. I'm relying on your grace. I have no power of my own because we need the grace of God. We need the grace of God to sustain us through our generation. Look at all those prayer points. Look at all the things that we are afforded just by the grace of God. So we need to constantly tell God, I'm relying on you. I'm depending on you. Even when I'm cooking, you know, Maybe especially if I'm cooking and I'm fasting and I can't taste the food, I'm like, Holy Spirit, I'm just relying on you. Or maybe I'm going on a journey I've never been on before. Holy Spirit, I'm relying on you. Or maybe I'm applying for a job and I'm finding it challenging. Holy Spirit, I'm relying on you. Or maybe I've been given an assignment to do and I'm struggling. Holy Spirit, I'm relying on you. Or maybe I'm feeling somehow in my body. Holy Spirit, I'm relying on you. Release your great grace upon me. Release your great grace upon me. Release your great... That's how I'm you know, hammering before God, I need your grace. I need your grace. So I want us to bow down our heads, even as we get the Holy Communion items ready. I want us to bow down our heads tonight and say, Father, please let your grace continue to work for me. Let your grace continue to work for me. Let your grace continue to work for me. Brethren, pray that prayer tonight. 
Lord, let your grace continue to work for my family. Let your grace continue to work for me. Let it work for my family. Let tonight's Holy Communion meal be a different one. Let it be a different one. Lord, let your grace continue to work for me. Lord Jesus, let your grace continue to work for me. Please, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your grace continue to work for me. We know it's not by power, it's not by might. It's not by power, it's not by might. It's not by works of righteousness. No, we now know that, Lord. We know that, Lord. We know that, Lord. You said so that no man can boast, so that no man will boast. Father God Almighty, we know your grace has found us just as we are empty handed. That's what we are told. But Daddy, oh God, we know that forever we are changed by your love. I want you to lift up your voice and say, Father, let your grace transform me. Let your grace transform me in the name of Jesus. This meal is a transforming meal that we're taking tonight. Father, let your grace transform us in the name of Jesus. Father, let your grace transform us. Let it transform As we take this meal, make us become another person. Let us become another person in the name of Jesus. You know, there was this scripture about um, King Saul. The Bible said, when the spirit of God came upon him, it was transformed into a different man. I want us to rise up to our feet tonight as we get ready to take, uh, you know, to break bread. And I want us to just say, Lord, as I take this meal tonight, let this meal transform me into a different person. Let this meal transform me into a different person in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, let this meal transform me into a different person in the name of Jesus. Father God, let this meal transform my family into a different person. Lord, as we take this meal tonight, we just, I want to see evidence of changes. I want to see, see God, nothing should be business as usual. Nothing should be business as usual. We want changes. We want to see transformation as we take this meal tonight. We've been taking communion, you know, every month. We take it sometimes twice. Some months we take it three times, you know. I think this September, we took it three times, you know. God Almighty, I'm praying, oh God, as we break bread tonight, oh God, let this meal transform us. Let us see evidence of changes in our lives, our circumstances, our health, our businesses, our finances, our marriage, our children, our homes, our ministries, our academics. Father God, we want to see evidence of a change, evidence of a change. Let your grace begin to work for us. Let it work for us. When we read throughout the Bible, we see how your grace outplayed in the lives of so many people that positively, Lord, let us begin to see how your grace plays out in our lives positively in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We bless your name. We give you all of the glory. We give you all of the honor. <clears throat> in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I'm going to read um, 1 Corinthians 11. 23 to 30. So um, pick up your communion items and I'm going to pray over them. Everlasting Father, we thank you, Lord Almighty, for this communion items, O Lord God. We ask, O God, that you bless them, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Tonight it ceases, O God, to be um, uh, um, wine. Daddy and an ordinary bread. It's now um, your your blood and your body. Mm -hmm. And so as we partake of it tonight, oh God, it will be a blessing to us. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to read First Corinthians 11, 23 to 30. Mm -hmm. And it says, For so I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, yes, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, mm -hmm. took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. You know, so he broke the bread into two, indicating how his body was broken for us. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had sobbed, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till they come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. I pray that none of us will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. And verse 28 says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. And then he says, for 
He that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. As we take this bread, as we take this wine tonight, we will eat it unto life. Amen. We will eat it unto divine health. Amen. We will eat it unto prosperity Amen. in the name of Jesus. We will even eat it unto promotion Amen. in the name of Jesus, in the Amen. things of the Lord, and in the things that we are desirous of the Lord Amen. in Jesus' name. So I just want you to go before God Amen. tonight and say, Father, is Amen. there anything, O oh God, that will render me unworthy? to partake of this meal tonight. Purge me of such, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Is there anything, O oh God, that will render me unworthy from partaking of this meal? Purge me of it tonight, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, let's take the bread and eat it. Okay, I believe we've done that. So let's take, get ready to take the wine, which is a representation of the blood of Jesus. And we drink it in the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, okay. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you can pray in spirit, go ahead and do so. Just give us a couple of minutes to do that. Makila brado shi andu sekin teriyama, ila braga do shi andayalaba, masika la braga do shi andiribi. Just raise your voice and pray in the spirit. Ibarakato Santurama, Neji Galabraga do Sian Torobo, Nicalabrado, Shiando, Sukun Toroba, Balado, Shiando, Sukun Toroba, Shian de Remi, Nesekele Brodo, Shian Dayalama, Mazi Galabraga do Shian Torobo, Uzi Baraga do Sian Dorobo, Neshi Calabraga do Santo Roba, La Calabra do Shian de Rebe, Zicalabraga do Shian Dorobo, Zicilabra do Shian Diana, E Calabra do Shian do Soco Doroba, Baracato Shian Darama, E Calabraga do Shian Diana. If you are trusting the Lord for healing, just lay your hand upon anywhere in your body and just say, Lord, tonight I receive my healing. If you are trusting God for deliverance of any sort, say, Lord, I receive my deliverance. Let up your voices. And make sure you're praying. If you're trusting God for one miracle or the other, say, Lord, tonight I receive my miracle in the name of Jesus. I receive my healing. I receive my deliverance. I receive my miracles. I receive my blessings. I receive my promotion. I receive my increase. I receive my transformation in the name of Jesus. I receive my deliverance in the name of Jesus. I receive strength, Lord, in the name of Jesus. But I don't know what you're trusting the Lord for. I receive fruitfulness, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I receive grace, power, in the name of Jesus. I receive enablement, in the name of Jesus. I receive strength, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Beloved, I don't know what you're trusting God for. I receive answer to all my prayers, in the name of Jesus. Whatever you want, I've mentioned it. Feel. I don't know what you want, but add to it. Say, Lord, this is what I'm believing you for tonight. It's a special meal. Remember, it's a month of double grace. Say, Father, I want the double. I want the double. I want the double. Double promotion. Double elevation. Double blessing. Oh God, double portion. Remember what Elisha asked for. He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. So this is a month of the doubles. Release double. The doubles, the doubles upon us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Makila brad o shi andorobo in the name of Jesus double grace double honor in the name of Jesus double favor in the name of Jesus double portion double blessing in the name of Jesus the double is reserved for the firstborn say Father that double portion of the firstborn that you oh God we receive it tonight we receive it tonight let this year be a, this month be the month of the doubles for us it will be a month of the doubles for us in the whole month of the year this is the first month. With the double digits, and it's the first month where the number is double. So we're trusting God for doubles on every side. 
We are trusting you for the double, Lord. It is you that we are relying on. It is you that we are depending on for the double. Now lift up your voice and begin to thank God. Just say, Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you have done tonight. Thank you for a new beginning. Thank you, Lord, for a new beginning of power, a new beginning of favor, of honor, of increase in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a turnaround for good. Let's sing this song. I can see everything turning around. Yeah, turning around. I can't hear you. Come on. Turning around in my favor. I can see everything turning around. Yeah, yeah. Turning around. Oh, turning around in my favor. I can see everything turning around. Hey, turning around. Oh, turning around. Let me see you turn around. My favor. I can see everything turning around. Turning around. Turning around. Turning around in my favor. I can see everything turning around. Yeah, turning around, oh, oh, turning around in my favor. Hallelujah. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you,